2014 is going to be the year of certainty. It's going to be the year where a lot more things come out of the ground and we start seeing a lot more tangible progress. Construction volumes already in the city are running at two, three, four times what they were prior to the quake. But there's more momentum, there's more things are going to happen in the next year. We've done most of the planning, so here's the year when we really want to start bringing things together. I've got three areas of real priority. The first is in the housing area. Making sure we get enough houses built, but also we're fixing houses to people that need those big repairs done, and in particular we're looking after the most vulnerable. Um, the second area is around the central city. Um, making sure the big projects really come to fruition. Nine out of the 14 anchor projects will start construction this year. The river park is already well underway. We're going to see some really big things happening down at the end of Oxford Terrace where, where Cashel Street meets the river. It's the year where Anthony Goff will get his, his construction um, largely complete in that area around the river and I think that's going to be fantastic. But also back up um, Cashel Street, Nick Hunt's development will also get underway. So that's almost an entire city block, that block bounded by Oxford Terrace, Cashel, Hereford and Colombo. Most of that will be under construction by the middle of the year. So I'm in Cathedral Square and what I've got here is a couple of maps showing what's going on in the CBD. This is August of last year and you can see this stuff happening but it's not sort of nearly as overwhelming as you go to this map here showing what was going on in December of last year. And since then, even more plans, even more developments have come to fruition. This doesn't show everything. It shows the stuff you know, that, pe that people have given us a picture for so we can put it up on a map. So you can see across the central city, there's an awful lot going on. And as time goes on, we'll add to this picture so we'll get a real feel to where things are going. Come down to the Cathedral Square, see the map, and, get a, and enjoy all the developments you can see going on in this area. This map is also up on our website as well if you want to do it from home. So the issue that keeps me awake most at night is the housing issues around Christchurch. In this year we want to make sure as much as humanly possible happens on that housing front. It's the year where EQC um, are confident they're going to largely finish their repair program, which is pretty extraordinary sort of a feat. Last year, the private insurers, the people that were managing the overcap claims, got through about 700 complete rebuilds. The plans for this year is something more like 2,000 rebuilds, and then another two or 3,000 the following year. So the private insurers want to get through all their work, or the vast majority of it, over the next two years. And there's going to be a big focus at Sarah in trying to make sure that does happen. That we're removing roadblocks, um, finding ways to sort out difficult engineering problems so that bit of the rebuild can really happen. So within that group there are still people, people who haven't had their houses fixed or rebuilt, who have got particular health issues, who are vulnerable, who are elderly. Um, the private insurers report they're through about 80% of those claims. They've fixed about 80% of those people's houses. But they're a real priority to make sure those people get fixed as soon as as possible. To support them, um, we've done various things. We've got the residential advisory service going. Um, they've seen about 2,000 people in the last six months. And we're seeing many people are finding that service really useful to help them sort of navigate sorting out insurance issues, which in some cases have just become overwhelming for people. But also there are some people, even once their insurance issues are kind of sorted, they know when they're going to get fixed, are still living in houses which is just substandard, for a be it, uh, it's got holes in the roof, um, we're finding people who don't have toilets that flush properly because they've got broken laterals in their, in their sewers and all those sort of things. We've got a program underway to get help to those people as well. But so far we've only found about 45 families who needed that sort of help. And I find that really hard to believe there aren't even more people out there with those sort of issues. So there'll be another focus for the next few months, finding those people and making sure we get support to them. We're working with CanCern on a program to identify those people and get them help, but that's a really, really important area. The last priority for the year is the future use of the red zone. 
So within the red zone, we've demolished um, on the flat land about half the houses. We hope to get through most of the rest of the demolitions um, this year. And then we've got that really exciting job of working with the community, working out what's going to happen next to those red zone areas. Um, I think there are so many possibilities out there. People talk about rowing courses, people talk about swimming courses, people talk about you know cycleways and walkways and native bird areas and wetlands. We don't know what that future is, but we do know that it will become a real asset to the city. Someone suggested to me the other day, if we're going to make a rowing course and get a whole lot of soil, don't take it away, make a hill. Make a hill in, the, in the, that eastern part of Christchurch so can, people can walk up it or run up it and see the sunrise or the sunset in an area which, was, which used to be flat. So I'm really, really excited by that future use of the red zone and working with the community on what that future use is. This is going to be the year of certainty. It's going to be the year where things really come together. It's a year when we're going to see much, much more progress in the CBD, but also the year outside of the CBD, out in the suburbs, we start seeing a lot more happening. We start seeing our houses fixed, but also importantly, we make sure the people who are the weakest, the people who are the most vulnerable, get through those processes as quickly as we can. Each month we publish the Greater Christchurch Recovery Update, sort of a, a glossy which we put in the letterbox um, every month. This month one of the key things in it is an update from all the insurers showing the progress they've made and where they're at, set out by insurance company. So that should be coming to your, into your letterbox into the next, in the next week or so, so have a look at that. If you can't find it, give us a ring and we can post one out to you, or nearly all that information is also up on our website. So this will be a regular monthly update I give on it on the CERA website. Um, the CERA website, www.cera.govt.nz and it's got a lot more information on that website about a whole lot of things that are happening across Christchurch and across Canterbury.